uh, today, today, um, we are doing um, chapter 15. Uh, obviously, Ryan and Lucy aren't here today. Um, we're doing chapter 15, which is on input bindings rather than last week when we did output bindings in Chinese. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if you want to take away, sorry, this is a book club for JavaScript for R, and I imagine you're, if you're 14 episodes into the YouTube list, you know about that already. Okay. Sure, yeah, okay, cool, cool. Can you can you see my screen us? Um I will be able to in a second, I think. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, brilliant. Um so I, I think I'll be able to go through this rather quickly since uh, you painstakingly laid down the groundworks in the last in the last section. That uh, in reading this section actually I, I was kind of reminded of uh, earlier chapters where it seems like well, you know, the author instructs us how to do a thing, and then we kind of end up doing variants on that thing uh, for a few subsequent chapters to deepen our understanding. I mean, here are the differences. It's, it's a, an input, uh, input, custom input rather than custom output, but the logic turns out to be very, underlying logic turns out to be very similar. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with that said, I guess kind of the roadmap is, I just wanted to, uh, uh, you know, in this chapter really um, wanted to, hopefully we'll come away having some understanding about how to build custom inputs, uh, custom UI um, uh, inputs, uh, and then see how to build the, the, uh, the bindings uh, from JavaScript to Shiny to make that communication between the, the custom input and, and, and Shiny uh, work. Uh, so with that in mind, kind of the roadmap, I mean, kind of two big sections uh, as the book does. You know, the first section that looks at how to build the UI uh, input element, and then a second on how to bind that U, uh, UI input element to, uh, uh, to, to to Shiny so that changes that take place in the UI are uh, uh, basically that has a way of reacting to those changes. So first, um, kind of by way of reminder, let's look at what a Shiny checkbox uh, yields. So if we execute this function in the console, um, then we'll end up with this, this corresponding HTML output. So it's just simply a div that has a few classes. Inside the div is the interesting bit. Uh, so we've got a checkbox uh, that contains a label. Um, the label tag wraps two, two pieces right here, an input, an input tag that says that we have an input of uh, this ID and of type check, checkbox. Uh, and then it has a has a span here that's uh, that turns out to be the label, right? Um, the reason I'm showing this is because the custom input that we're going to design today is a uh, will in all appearances be a switch like you're accustomed to seeing in some of the you know Android or iPhone type UIs, um, but at its base it's really just a checkbox styled differently. Um, so. Where are we going with the UI? Uh, so what we want at the end of the day is the UI element that looks like this, right? It's uh, you know some little box right here with a background color and a little toggle, right? So this is where it's toggled on when it's toggled off, it'll be in a different position. Um, and just as the book does, I wanted to draw the uh, attention to kind of W3 schools um, kind of set up for for this this kind of switch switch UI. Uh, it'll provide a little bit of a, uh, uh, a roadmap for us. So in, in, in effect, where we want to go it, it is something like this. We want to have this label tag with class switch to designate this whole thing as a switch UI. Uh, and within it, we're going to, to have a, an input tag of type checkbox, because indeed this is a checkbox at its base. Um, and, then, and then to have a, a span that uh, in our case is a, is a slider, right? It's this little box inside. Um, and um, I'll go kind of quickly over this since uh, it's really not the part that's of tremendous interest here. But what we want to do is, is we want to have some CSS that's that's going to style these elements. So we have here a switch class and a slider class. And we're going to want to style these things so that uh, once uh, this HTML is styled with CSS, it'll take on this, this appearance. Uh, Right. So we have you know, a switch, switch class uh, and corresponding uh, CSS. Uh, the switch inputs is the input tag within the switch class. Uh, the slider, uh, the 
etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you know some some kind of transitions for uh, the uh, basically css will help us in effect the animations as we toggle mm. from the on state to the off state off state to the on state uh, etc so obviously we could we could change all of this you know make the background red if we want make the button a different color uh, this is all just css styling on top of uh, our our html really really basic html yeah. uh, yeah. right so at the end of the day this is what we want in html and so the question then becomes how do we how do we get there with um so i'll do kind of this author does in the book um and, and go step step by step uh so again you know the desire the output is we want to have uh, an input we want to have this this be uh, what we create with R. So again, this label tag of class switch that contains input and a span uh, that's, that's our center. And so let's start kind of working from the inside out. Let's first create the input, the input tag. Um, so as 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 always, we'll we'll create a, a function in R. Let's call it switch input. Uh, it takes an ID uh, and creates the same thing. Uh, with the tag. So we're going to have uh, you know, this uh, HTML tools tags. We create an input tag because, again, we want to have an input tag. Uh, we're going to pass it an ID, which is ID from the, the function, uh, and then type checkbox because, again, we want this switch, or what appears to be a switch, to be at its base of uh, a checkbox. And then we're going to give it a class. So switch, uh, class switch, switch input. So this is this is going to basically create um, create our our input tag right here. But as you can see, there's there's more going on, and so we need to 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 kind of uh, create some additional scaff scaffolding. So working yeah. from the inside yeah. out. Um, so now what we need to do, we take the same function and complicate it a little bit further. So uh, uh, adding the rest of the rest of the content. Um, so this iteration number two and our design is switching. Uh, so we've got our input, uh, you know, this input object right here, uh, that as before is simply an input tag that has has a few attributes. Uh, you know, we've got the type uh, type checkbox class switch input. Um, I'll come back to this in, in a bit. Um, and, and and what we're going to do is we're, we're going to uh, again with with HTML tools, we're going to you know by by a tag list to compose the switch input widget that we want, right? So we'll have at the top. Uh, to the image of the last chapter. Uh, so we have a, a label at the top that says switch input, and then we have the switch, uh, the switch input itself, right? Um, so with that in mind, we want to create have a text label at the very top, and then have a label tag um, that's going to include two pieces, the input and the slider. And then we're going to associate with each, each one of these kind of, uh, um, tags the, the, the appropriate label. Um, so here we're going to create, um, the author just called it form, you know, the, the overall form of the input, um, you can give us an arbitrary name. It's going to be a tag list that's going to have, you know, first uh, a little paragraph tag that's going to contain our labels. This is our shiny, our shiny label. This will end up being, you know, as in the image here, this little bit of text that appears on top of the this, uh, this, uh, switch input. Um, then after that, we're going to have our, our label our label tag, uh, which will, will contain a few things. So first, we're, we're going to give it a switch class, because remember, with CSS, we want to give it some styling um, that points to the switch class. We'll have the input. So this is the inner bit that we, that we designed previously. Right? So this is the uh, this part right here. Um, and, and then we're going to have our, our span, which is which is going to end up being the, the, the slider. So again, it's uh, pointing to the slider class, which has some which has some set on it. Uh, and then at this stage, this relatively simple function uh, is, is simply going to take uh, is simply going to take uh, ID label and then return and basically return the HTML code that we yeah. we need, right? Fairly simple so far. Um, the next part is that, you know, obviously, uh, I, I kind of glossed over this, but, um, you know, in practice, we're going to have some dependencies, dependencies on a few other files that we're going to load in to show uh, into, into our Shine app. So in particular, 
um, the CSS code, which I showed previously. So the CSS uh, style sheet right here, which can, which defines our, our different classes, switch class, spider class, et cetera, um, as well as some JavaScript that we've not yet touched, um, uh, but it, it, it will exist. In, in the book, you know, the author kind of starts this all out by putting the scaffolding in place as we did in the last section of just creating the necessary uh, files and then progressively populating them. Uh, here, I'm just going to assume that the files exist and we'll go about populating them as, as, we, as, we, as we look at the contents here. Um, so in order, in order to create dependencies, um, we, we need to do uh, a, a, few, a few things. Um, so we need, we need to create a dependency object um, that basically tells us, uh, you know, what the things upon which this, this, uh, this input depends. Um, so we'll use HTML tools, HTML dependency, and create a dependency object of certain names, which imports to match, to match our, uh, the name that we've, uh, that we've provided up here, the class switch input. Um, and give us some arbitrary version number, and then basically point, point to uh, a few, few files uh, in, in our uh, uh, file structure. So yeah. bindings.js, which is going to be our JavaScript uh, script that will contain the, the bindings. And then the styles.css, whose content will be the same as what I showed in the previous section, all the style for, for the, 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 our HTML scaffolding for the input. Um, and, and then lastly, uh, you know, again, using HTML tools, we'll simply attach those dependencies to to this object. So, you know, we've created this, this object here, form, uh, which basically contains all of the HTML code, and we're going to attach the dependencies to it so that, um, you know, in, in, in our, our shiny web page, we're, we're basically going to have some dependencies existing in the, in the header tag. Yeah. So, so far, pretty simple, simple relatively simple. Um, on, I guess, the interesting, interesting bits, which uh, Russ, thankfully, you made much, much easier. Uh, um, although I, I freely admit, even here, I, I feel like I, I don't fully, I don't fully get this yet. I think I need a little bit more experience under my belt before I can fully uh, yeah. have inter internalize this. But I, I think I get broadly the workings of it. So, um, it, so far, all we have, uh, you know, if, if we've kind of followed development up to this point, is we have uh, an HTML, we have a, the HTML um, input. Right, but we don't have any way for Shiny to react to that to that input in the way in which we want. Right, mm -hmm. and so really, what we want to build because this is a non-standard input, I assume, well, not the open source code, but I assume that for all of Shiny's standard input uh, inputs, we have these bindings already um, that, that they come, you know, uh, they come pre-canned as part of uh, Shiny's functions. Right, you know, the text input. Uh, uh, Checkbox, etc. Right? Because this is a custom input, we need to build those bindings by hand. Um, and uh, for those bindings, we, need, we really kind of have a, a list of desired features uh, for those bindings. So, first, as was the case last week, we need to be able to find the input uh, elements in the DOM somehow. Right? And uh, as we'll see, we're going to do it again by, by class um, to get the value of the of the input. In, in the DOM, uh, uh, so you know, if the switch is turned on, we want to be able to return that it's uh, the you know to the rest of the app that the, the input is uh, the switch is turned on, it's turned off, and we want to know it's turned on. Additionally, we want to be able to set uh, the value of, of the DOM. So this separately from kind of user interactions, uh, we want to be able to set the value of, of the DOM. So in, in effect, have have, an, have the ability so that an instruction server side can change can change uh, um, an element, you know, something about this element in the top. Um, and, and closely linked with this uh, is is we want uh, we want uh, the ability for the UI to kind of restrict, receive instructions from the sign, shiny server on how things have changed. So if we have any shiny server side code that results in a change in, in, in the logic. We want, to, we want there to be a connection so that that shiny server-side function can have uh, can, can affect the change in, in, in uh, 
Yeah, it's funny though because I, I I was reading this section and thinking, but but doesn't that kind of doesn't doesn't that ruin the the kind of the reactivity graph that if if your inputs can now be updated? I, I know that I mean you can update a whole UI and you can render you can do all sorts of things to kind of it just seemed strange to me that like that was it, that it was an option that you could close the you know close the circle in the the what 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 was supposed to be a reactive dag but um yeah uh anyway I'm, well no, that's actually that points an interesting question it's something i haven't looked at less is is does it break the reactive graph uh, mm. or, or not or does like kind of somehow you know through the where I read this 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 term is from having in another context, the deep magic of uh, you know the reactivity, like it's somehow like bind, you know setting a shiny binding. Does it introduce some of these things into the reactivity graph? I think that'd be worth mm -hmm. worth looking at. I'm not sure if this is kind of like a Deus ex machina kind of way of you know just from outside of everything changing changing um, you know the UI, or if this is uh, a job a, a way in which JavaScript well, our JavaScript, let's put it that way, our custom JavaScript can somehow enter into the reactivity mm. graph. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I really yeah, am not sure. I haven't looked at yeah, it. I don't, I, to be honest, I don't think it's something to, to worry about too much. I mean, if you've if you've got, like, in, in Shiny, you might have a drop down that selects from a, a, a bunch of choices. And those choices might be determined by, you know, some other drop down that you've changed. So the, the actual, you know, the thing that you're selecting your choice from in that second drop down might be determined by a first drop down, and Shiny has to be able to to update what your choices are in a way that yeah. doesn't necessarily modify the um, value that's bound to an input uh, variable, but does modify the choices that it that the user can make and which would then be a, you know a, from which that variable can take its value yeah um, yeah i think in this particular case as i understand it russ is like actually it would result in changing the, the variable yeah uh, so so it would kind of be a, a separate separate and maybe more worrisome case so more powerful at the very least yeah. Cool. Um, actually, I'm actually going to try to look at that one actually, because I'm curious. Um, uh, another desire last year was kind of to have, to have, you know, the, to kind of have the shiny, have the shiny server listen for changes in particular elements in the DOM. So in particular, our, our custom input elements. So to know when there's been a change in the, uh, in this, uh, in this input, so that it, that Shiny can react accordingly, right? So we need to have some kind of list code that's listening to uh, particular changes on a particular element, right? Uh, and, and then kind of this other bit, um, which I uh, felt a little shoehorned into the chapter, but is nevertheless interesting, is is uh, you know through JavaScript as well, we we could kind of dictate how quickly we'll how quickly that app should react uh, to changes in input value. Should it, uh, you know, react in lockstep with with the, the user user changes, or should it wait for some period of time for uh, making a change? Um, um, right. So so then this basically points this kind of desired set of features uh, of kind of JavaScript findings and points to uh, you know, extension methods that we need to write into into the the, the, the shiny the shiny uh, input bindings. So in particular, you know, as, as we had last time, find you know find an element of the DOM, get its ID, get its value. Now, additionally, set the value um, uh, in, in 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 the UI. Um, receive messages, kind of receive. Instructions from the Shiny server to uh, uh, basically affect it, it, it to affect changes, um, and then this, this bit of 
can subscribe. It, it, it seems ineffectively continuous, <clears throat> pardon, continuously listen for changes um, uh, in, in the user, um, uh, in the custom approach. Uh, mm -hmm. And then this last piece kind of uh, about reacting uh, would be how to set a rate, rate policy in terms of so, how, how much the action comes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So the receive message is for the JavaScript object to receive a message from Shiny and subscribe is for the JavaScript object to be told which elements of sh the server code it is supposed to modify effectively. So subscription is, is that right? Uh, no, so I, I think it's a, 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 it's a bit different. So receiving a message is, is that the, the, the JavaScript receive a message from sh the Shiny server. Um, uh, and, and then the JavaScript will kind of react accordingly. So it's kind of like yeah. a, a JavaScript side listener, if I could put it that way. Whereas uh, the subscribe bit, at least as I understand it, is to um, have JavaScript listen on Shiny server's behalf for any changes in, in, the, in the DOM that um, should result uh, in Shiny, the Shiny server doing something. All right. Yeah. Okay. At least that's, that's, that's how I understand it. I may have it exactly wrong, but that's, that's how I understand it. Um, yeah, again, so kind of my point that I, I think I get this, but probably I need much more practice in order really to get it. Um, uh, maybe I'll come back to this later. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. speed, speed, speed through the JavaScript bits so we can kind of go into the working example and probably launch back into this, this, this model, which ends up being, I think, very helpful. So now, now to the JavaScript. So rather than kind of laying this out progressively, I just put all of the final code that I've, I've kind of commented for, for, for my own understanding, frankly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll kind of go through it incrementally as the book, as the book does. So you know, at, at, you know, at the very beginning, you need in this JavaScript to set some bindings uh, you know, between JavaScript and, and, and Shiny. Uh, so there are you know, obviously these default methods that you exist these default bindings, we need to create extension methods that uh, do the things that we've just talked about. Uh, um, so here's this kind of intent to extend the methods. Um, first, we want to find, uh, we want to find uh, the switch, uh, switch, uh, we want to find any element in the DOM that has a switch input uh, class, so this is our custom binding. Um, then we want to uh, get the value of, uh, of of this element in the DOM. Uh, here, uh, I, I thought it was kind of interesting where, um, you know, once we found the element in the DOM, we're going to get the property of the DOM. That's what this prop stands for, you know, whether it's checked or not. So again, fundamentally, this is a checkbox that just looks different. Um, and, and, and the author makes the note, or, or I found this somewhere, oh, maybe somewhere else, uh, that, that normally you might want to use the val method uh, within jQuery to return the value of something if this were uh, some other input. Um, but because this is a checkbox, the checkbox has, an actual, has a check attribute. We're simply returning the check attribute, right? Whether it's checked or not, it ends up being a Boolean, a Boolean value. So uh, this this could look a little bit. Let's see. The implementation could look different if you have if you're working with a different kind of type of, uh, of of input. Um, right. Then coming to setting the value. These these, these two pieces will come up and see in tandem. So uh, setting setting the value. Um, so here here what we're doing is we're basically changing. You know we're reaching to this element in in the DOM and changing its checked property to the value to which we want to change it. So if we want to change it to true, we you know, change it to true, and then, uh, or, if, or if we want to change it to false, we change it to false. And then there's this, this change this change function right here. Um, I think it's explained a bit more in the W3 schools uh, site that I've, I've, I've linked here, but, it, uh, but in effect, as, as the author of this chapter says, it really we need this to ensure that this change actually fires and actually, it actually happens. It's not enough to have the code up to this point. Uh, we actually have to have this, this, uh, this kind of change imperative to, to have the, the value be changed. Okay. Um, Oh, sorry, no, you have a yeah. yeah, I do have a question. There's um, the the final iteration of the switch input function. 
had an if checked um, 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 modify the input so that it's so that the checked property is NA rather than either true or false. And I wasn't quite sure w why they chose uh, a missing value rather than a, a true or false value in that setting. Yeah, you know what was I was and I noticed I, I was kind of looking at the I, I was looking at the shiny app in um, uh, you know in the browser with, with the you know developer tools and I, I noticed there there actually were, were a couple errors appearing in the console about I think exactly this. So right. I'm, I'm not this part I'm not sure I quite followed in honesty. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but but the the purpose it, of that it, line it, is it, to it, kind it, of it say. Yeah, so the, the purpose is like you can you can add a an input element where it's it's checked to begin with or it's definitely unchecked when the app starts ba based on like the, the user's choices. But I don't yes. see how that achieves I just don't see how that achieves it with with a, a missing value rather than a, a just passing the value of checked through to um, yeah, it, that's that's what I was wondering myself. Is why they didn't yeah. pass that drop. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, yeah, so we can we can we can tinker a little bit with yeah. that. So the, the but the change method again. So that was um, you you set the you set the value of some property, but changing the value of the property doesn't necessarily mean that any other part of the app is aware that that property is modified. So you, Correct. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, and that, that's really where this kind of subscribe bit or could, could well come in, right? So mm. basically we need to have a listener um, on the JavaScript side that's kind of listening for changes. Um, so changes on this, this uh, this input uh, uh, and if there are changes, there's sort of a call back to Shiny. So it's basically, as I crudely understand, it's basically alerting Shiny that that this input that the, that a certain target property has changed, and then the Shiny mm. server, you know, should react, right, or at least yeah. be aware of, aware of this change. Um, Um, so, so this, this, uh, for example, the handle, um, this receive messages. So, uh, basically my understanding of, of, of this is that, that JavaScript will simply, um, listen for instructions from shiny, um, to change things. And then if, if it receives any, any messages, so I, I, there's, uh, this imperative, uh, Okay. Um, so there's this other function uh, that that's introduced as kind of the last one of the last sections in the chapter, where um, by clicking a button, an action button, we are uh, basically sending an instruction. So Shiny is sending a, a, a sending an input message um, uh, to to JavaScript, basically. Uh, and so we need we need to have JavaScript listening for such such messages. I think in the past we I think we had send custom output message or output or something like that. I think it was simply had an effect of pass some text. Here here we're we're instead you know passing a passing a value uh, to, to to JavaScript. So that's I think a better motivation for for that uh, function. In, right. Uh, so then, then, so that shiny can react, we need to have a listener event that's it's kind of intently on what everybody wants, listening to you know, changes changes on um, the, the switching. But um, there's kind of 
the opposite, I guess, of subscribe, which is unsubscribe. Although I didn't see this being used in, in, in the toy app. Uh, mm. or it was like I missed it. And, and effectively, I, I think it's essentially just to stop, you know, to kind of cut this communication in some way. So make it so that Shiny no longer, no longer, uh, you know, is this list for, for yeah. appreciations. Um, it's funny in this example because I imagine based on the CSS and, and everything, you could still, were you to unsubscribe Shiny from the checkbox, the user could still click the checkbox backwards and forwards, but it would no longer have any effects if you'd called unsubscribe. But presumably you could, you could hook an existing checkbox to a different input variable or something like that or maybe maybe that's not quite correct actually you'd have to unsubscribe and then resubscribe something yeah, yeah probably have to have the click like, yeah. listen stop and stop listening buttons in the UI or something yeah. silly like that um, be kind of a tour example. um and, and then the, the the last little bit in in, in the in the kind of extension methods here is, is kind of it's called get rate policy. It's more like setting the rate policy is, is saying um, how quickly the app should react to, to changes in the inputs. Yeah. Um, so basically here it, it is, you know, it, you know, throttle. So if there are more changes within this period, you, you know, it's the one change you could do uh, debounce and basically mm -hmm. not, li not listen in the first long period. Um, this this is important basically for kind of expensive computation on the on the server side, um, where uh, you know maybe you're doing some kind of a query with a string. You don't want Shiny to listen to every keystroke, but instead listen to the final result. So yeah, yeah. we wait until uh, you know, the final keystroke for you know some one or two seconds, and then, then execute the business logic. Yeah. I thought this is also curious if this is being done. By the way, uh, Russ, we, uh, I haven't thought about this, but just the remark kind of sprang to mind is there's a debounce function in this shiny. I was kind of wondering why this is uh, being brought up here. I don't know if there's a throttle function in shiny, but uh, it, it, I guess my point is it seems like this could also be done from shiny. Right, okay. So uh, an, an alternative to having this there would be to have. Um, so it's it's like a a, a debounce wrapper that you'd use in the server function of your shiny app. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay, well, that's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm I didn't know. Familiar with that, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um I had to I had to build a HTML widget that was to be used from Shiny, and whenever the user kind of moused over this widget different summaries were computed um and and never quite managed it but to be honest i didn't, sp <laughs> didn't spend much time on it because we didn't have it much time available but um um but at present it means w immediately upon mousing from one area to another something will be computed immediately but that's probably not a good idea the that you should put in this debouncing or throttling or something to mean that you know only if someone pauses over an area in this widget it should have done something. But um, that's that's quite interesting. I, I yeah, um, I've I've yet to actually write a, an an input binding for for Shiny. Yeah, but yeah, this either. is. Yeah, yeah actually, no. If time had allowed, I think what I would have wanted to go on and do is. Uh... Look at you know, kind of look at some of the source code of a few of mm. the custom inputs that are available through these various packages, like uh, uh, our 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 interface um, uh, uh, folks. Um, they have written yeah. a lot of custom custom UIs, that, and, and indeed, I think they have switches. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's also the material material UI. Um, that, uh, maybe maybe is an exercise outside of the session. To, I'd like to look at the source code and see if I, I see yeah. familiar things there. Uh, <laughs> certainly, certainly there will be a lot more CSS than, than most things, because <laughs> yeah. you know because this is really rudimentary stuff just to, to show how things work. You know, you want to make it look pretty, but more is required. Yeah. 
And then kind of last little step as before is really to just create this, uh, this uh, to register the bindings. Uh, and again, with some arbitrary, arbitrary name that hopefully will uniquely identify this binding so that um, you, you know, if needed, you could set the priority of different of different bindings. Uh, uh, and, and, yeah. Um, I guess kind of now to the demo, which is maybe the trivial part, but also the part that can be to mm -hmm. Um, actually, let me open it in the browser so we can inspect the page if it's so desired. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I've added this little bit over uh, here. Uh, well, the book added it, but you know, so here is just a switch. You know, if I click, if I click on this, you can see if there's some little CSS trans transition mm -hmm. to the between states, um, and then you know, the app more or less automatically reacts. Yeah. So we'll throttle it, but not too much. And then this is just a little bit. This is this is a you know kind of the set value part. Um, uh, where you know, through a custom message, we're basically sending instructions from Shiny to uh, to JavaScript to, to to make changes to the UI. Uh, you know, click on the switch on button, and then it has the effect of of, of turning of turning on the switch. And actually, it seems like it, it in turning on. I think this might actually be like primo facie evidence that perhaps that uh, that we're not outside of the reactive uh, model uh, because if I if I do this, um, you know, it changes the input and then and then you can you can see the server the server side code associated with the change in input value uh, takes takes place. Yeah. So that is. So all this code is kind of. Oh no, hold on. There's, there's a render plot call in the yes. server function, yes, and it 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 checks whether your custom switch is on, and nice. if it is, the the plot is printed. And I, I was quite surprised that. Sorry. It, um, I, having seen this working like this, I, I was wondering. I kind of, I, I didn't expect it the, the plot to disappear when the switch was turned off based on the source code, but it works perfectly. Uh, uh, so maybe I just um, uh, should have read it in a bit more depth. Um, yeah, that's cool. So the 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 observe event is. The, the button at the top of the page there was there. Okay, so maybe it's returning like, a, a, like an empty value. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm guessing that's. Yeah. So if the switch is not on, then that, I guess, this is an implicit else. Yeah. Oh, that's that's my so the. I rarely see that. The, the, the return there in that expression. Um, so that that isn't a that isn't a quick return from the whole server function. That's a quick return from the expression that's nested in render plot. Is is it? I guess. Could be wrong on this, but I mean, so certainly this side effect happens in printing mm. value mm. to the console. Um, that, um, right. Okay. And then I'm thinking like this. I guess you could write this as kind of like a if then. I'm guessing yeah, if, yeah. if if it's if it's off, then return and I guess implicitly nothing. And then that's you know that's going to be passed back to the yeah. to the plot to, uh, plot output. I think. Okay. Okay. Post hoc reasoning. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> I'm trying to right. explain what I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. No, it's cool though. I like. I like the um, the the thing. It, it's the yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, but the it it's so similar. The the code that you have to write for an input binding compared with an output binding is so similar. 
Yeah. Um, it's it's quite neat. And and actually, when I was looking at the shiny source code for how um, the output binding that object, how it um, attaches the um, various handlers to each element of that type. Um, the the source code looked like it was doing it. It was able to handle both input bindings and output bindings at the same in the, in the same kind of iteration. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's it, it's it's quite a neat little um, uh, approach. Um, I did read I did read the the input binding like the shiny tutorial, the tutorial on the R Studio website. And I, I, I don't think I'd have been able to have written one based on just that. Um, um, but yeah, I think the books made it a lot more clear what, what's going on. So the, um, the, the, there was a callback in, um, where was it? In subscribe. Yes. Is it, so it, is that something that a, a shiny author would typically write, or is that something that you would write in a, a package that, re, you know, that that releases this input to the shiny community? Because I, I, I don't know quite what I would write there as the callback. That would be to say, so subscribe would be to tell shiny that the um the switch's current value has changed and i was looking at this source code and thinking shouldn't the callback shouldn't it be passing either true or false you know depending on the value that that the switch is currently set to but maybe it's just that i i haven't quite followed what is happening here because I haven't seen an example of what that callback would look like. Um, so I assumed I, I assumed that that callback. This is where I need to do deeper rest. Um, I, I I kind of naively assumed that callback is maybe like an existing method uh, somehow, and I, I was just assuming mm. that it somehow like points to this get value part, right? Um, Okay. But worth worth looking into. Um, uh, hmm. All right, okay. And, and on, honestly, I've, I've heard callback mentioned several times, but I don't. I'm not sure I fully understand what it is. <laughs> I, I mean, I think you know, honestly, from from this, I think I want to see if I can find an easy, painless entry point that's a sort of. JavaScript listeners, uh, because it seems like that's that's really what what one would need yeah. to know more about to kind of effectively bring um, these types of things to to, to, to shine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and hopefully there is this um, uh, jQuery events page uh, here in the W three schools that talked about a lot of the all the method uh, a lot of the methods. Um, on events, I'll have to look and see. Actually, yeah. Right. Cool. Let's, let's see if there's actually a callback. Oh, it's a whole chapter. But a callback would to, it's it's simply it's just a function that you pass to another function, isn't it? Normally, the the the, the kind of definition of a callback. So that would, but it from that source code from from the the input binding source code it looked like it was something that the user was obliged to write but it seems to be something that shiny is actually all shiny might pass in a kind of default callback or something that that but so I'm trying to work out when and what would be uh, so tells shiny to, to retrieve the value. Okay. Okay. But how it does that, I guess <laughs> that, that, that's in the shiny source code, right? Um, yeah. I, I guess or the, the shiny JavaScript 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. Um, yeah. So, um, do you have any plans to to write this th these kinds of uh, tools for sh shiny at, at all in the immediate future? Do you think? For me, no, no plans. But uh, my current my current plans they push me in these directions. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. I think it, it presents kind of my shiny, my shiny, uh, my core is the shiny are not much more mature than kind of using existing tools and the, the look and feel of the shiny. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much the default shiny. Yeah. <laughs> Sad, sadly, <laughs> yeah. I, I fall into the trap of wanting to uh, 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 investing my efforts in the business logic instead of yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good to to have like a better appreciation of the the exactly. the underlying um stuff uh <laughs> for the inevitable moments when things all come wrong <laughs> um, um yeah uh, what, what about you russ uh, i mean i presume you me, I, well i mean where, where you are i um it, it's something i didn't expect to write many of but i, I i've ended up um being given um some tasks that relate to writing custom bindings in in shiny but i don't think I, it's not like i've got any plans to write and release any packages i've just done kind of one-off bits here and there yeah. but, but um, one piece i might want to dig into now and what kind of occurred to me is i was, I was uh, Going through this chapter is uh, Maya Gans. Uh, her, uh, I think she's given some talks lately on uh, having a, this like a, a design system um, in, in, in shiny. And so, it kind of crudely, I guess it means like you know, kind of like stock, stock styles uh, mm. of, of, of things, um, and, and probably things. It's also you have kind of a, a more polished boilerplate, if I can put it that that way. So. Um, I might, I might want to look into that and see how much of this she is incorporated in, um, yeah, yeah. You know, in what she does. In, in, in effect, like kind of ultimately the question, like how how to operationalize this without maybe going as deep as you know releasing a, a package like the R interface. Uh, people, uh, I don't, I don't have any aspirations of that in present, but it would be nice if I could sort of. Um, Dig my own pit of success with shiny. Just kind of have this uh, set of set of inputs that are you know somewhat tailored to my my own liking that are you know off path enough that I have to that they're custom, but maybe yeah. not so yeah. off path that you know, I could call them a JavaScript master. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's an impossible task though, because this year's JavaScript is going to be quite different from <laughs> next year's JavaScript. Um, yeah, uh, cool. Yeah, no, that was a really good. Um, it was it was a good a good chapter. It sounds like it sounds like Ryan is unlikely to join our book club meetings uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, Lucio also is back in college and, and whatnot so he's probably unlikely to to join many of the, the the subsequent meetings i was wondering how um how desperate you are to finish the whole book basically um, um yeah not, not super desperate and honestly <laughs> okay right okay no problem because for me it was these two sections it's the, the, the html widget section and the shiny section were the bits of this book that i really wanted to understand there are bits that i i would probably find useful to understand and whatnot and but i can't see myself writing things that take you know that use the 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 call to v8 or node or whatever it is from r i probably will use what does he call it packer or webpack or something like that the, the, uh, in in the later chapters which sounds sounds quite useful but it doesn't sound sufficiently it doesn't sound sufficiently interesting for me to want to get to the book, to be honest so i was wondering um given the you know every, you know how it's only really me and you 
whether we should just get to the end of the shiny section of the book and then maybe bring John in and have a discussion with him about, you know, the, um, you know, where what bits he would have liked to add a bit more on in the book and things like that. Because um, the very final section seems quite like mechanical and, you know, the bit on... Um, the, packaging up JavaScript and whatnot. The and the the V eight stuff, although quite interesting, I, I I don't think I I just don't think I'll use it really. And uh, but you know I'll, that, that's no reason not to study. So it was basically trying to work out whether uh, you want to carry on with the book club after what would it be? Yeah, Middle of October. Uh... Let me have a look at the subsequent chapters for us to see if there's, yeah, 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 of course. there's anything compelling in, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like kind of somehow integrating NPM is notionally uh, interesting to me. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, whether I'll go on to use it, who knows, but... Yeah, 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 no, that's cool. Definitely, if if there are if there are sections or chapters in the rest of the book that you yeah. you do want to cover, I'm ha more than happy to, to, to you know, to yeah. do... Uh, those specific chapters, but uh, like, like you, I think this is a section the V8 and machine learning that's not of interest to me. I, I mean, probably I'll read it somehow, just you know, out of a yeah. completist kind of mindset. Um, but <laughs> but I, I, I don't see myself using these things. Cool. It, it's, yeah. I, I think my interests are much more or less kind of aligned with yours. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, can I use it in Shiny or? Uh, you know, in, in, in some kind of HTML output. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if, I, if I can't, then it's maybe of less interest. I'll, I'll have a look here and see. Okay, uh, so okay, I just, yeah. I guess, I guess the other I... practical bit, though, uh, is like if, if Ryan's unlikely to come next week um, and you're out next week, should we kind of... Um, yeah, I think if, we'll if, have if, to pause. If we want to do cookies, should we, yeah. should we pause? Yeah. yeah, 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 I think so. Because... Um, I don't see much value in you talking to yourself. Yeah, I, I, I would like to do the, the, the thing on the shiny widgets. I, I mean, I'm happy to do it at any chapters, but um, yeah, I, I am quite keen on that. Um, what, and I've not actually read it fully yet. Um, but yeah, I'd definitely like to finish this part of the book in you know the depth that it yeah. deserves, considering how useful it's been already to me. Um, cool, cool. Thanks for today, though. Yeah, that was great. great. That was brilliant. That was great and brilliant. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you soon. Um, so I won't be here next week. Two weeks time, I'm almost certain it'll, it will go ahead. But yeah, cool. Okay, I'll speak to you soon. Sounds good. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah, bye.